Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Black Eyed on Review. This time we'll be checking out Woody's World. This was developed by Vision Software and published by Acid Software in 1993. As the title sequence rolls, it gives us a quick heads up on what we are about to face. You can see a train in the background which appears in the bonus level. We can see the credits of this game, Paul Andrews, Rodney Smith and Blair Zupikic. And pressing the fire button we begin on the very first castle which is Steam Castle and from the map screen if we press the escape key that will also bring up some more options. And that isn't intuitive, but if we do that, you can see we can now load a game from a saved password. And that is a long password that you have to enter in using the controller. And I think the passwords are gained on the map screen if you press escape, if you manage to get through a level, and it might present you with that. I'm not quite sure, but those passwords are all on the Lemon Amiga website. We can also continue the game from where we last left off. One button or two button controller options are supported and also easy and hard mode as well. And we can also quit back to those titles. But now let's just continue with that first level. This is Steam Castle. Woody's world we play as an elf called Woody and he can jump on things and jump on animals heads to kill them just like a turrican game and that comes in very handy because we don't have any firepower at this moment in time all we can do is to jump on their heads and if we pull down over a mystery door that will then take us on to another part of the level and in this case we can collect some more coins. Also cut through some sections and some of those cut through sections are clear because you can see those as different tiles in the landscape but later on those will be hidden. So now we we'll return with another jingle of music back to the main level itself where we last left off and sometimes it's difficult to jump on the enemy's heads but as soon as we jump up then those enemies will turn around and that gives us the opportunity to get that job done. So we can also collect some coins as well and you can see the coin counter in the bottom corner. We have 66 coins at the moment and you can also see a chest counter as well which we'll move on to a bit later on. Just like a Mario game we'll find some hearts and inside those there are power ups. Star power up you can see on the very top of the screen gives us the ability to fire stars and the one up that you can see that we collected gives us an extra life. We can also collect this staff and the staff gives us the prince power and that gives us a green overcoat. It also gives us the ability to jump further as well and we can kick by pressing the fire button and pulling to the diagonal left or right and the kick manoeuvre will come in handy a bit later on. You can see we can collect some early lives at this point. We don't have too many at the start of the game but we're up to five already by collecting those and you have to make sure to collide with those bonuses in order to pick those up. 
Now that we can press fire, we can shoot stars out, and those will arc depending on the amount of power that we've got at the moment, which is listed in the bottom left corner. We have half power, so we can lob those stars out. Now we have 121 coins and four chests, which are listed in orange, which means we've collected all the chests on that level, and we've collected most, if not all, of the coins as well. We also get a perfect bonus, which adds to our score. Level 1.2, it begins with a nice easy section which you can simply go left here and collect some more bonuses and you might see that it also gives us a chance to collect the staff. And we've already collected the staff, we are already the green prince so we can't collect that twice, that's why the staff disappears. So if we get killed we'll return back to the elf again and that means if we go all the way back to that spot we can collect that staff again and power ourselves back up. But as long as we don't get killed we'll remain as the prince and that just makes life a bit easier because we can jump further and we also have the star power up just in case we didn't have that. There it is again. So at random spots around the level you'll pick up some bonuses and some power ups and the ability to fire stars makes life much easier because we can now shoot those enemies. The aim of each level is to collect a certain number of chests and once those chests are collected they will pile up on the bottom right corner and we have to clear out at least half of the chests on every level in order to get through to the next one and the exit door will be locked until we collect enough chests. You can see if the chest counter is listed in white that means the exit door will be locked and when we collect enough chests that counter will turn green and so let's cut through again into another hidden section of which you'll find many on this particular game and yet again let's collect those power-ups and sometimes we can simply jump up directly and it will take us to the top of the platform that is definitely a handy trick to remember for later on in the game we've collected another chest that means the total now is green which means the exit door is open and we can collect another one there that makes four chests that we've collected and it doesn't tell us how many chests that there are on the level but we know that we have got enough now to exit and if we collect all of the chests then that will go orange and then we get the perfect bonus so it's worth collecting all those things up and all those coins as well because for every 25 coins that we collect we'll actually gain one bar of health energy and you can see that goes up it starts red and then it goes orange yellow green and blue and then purple once we collect enough of those and look at that an extra life disappearing which is really easy to do and again the crown that gives us the king power which i think gives us the biggest jump in the game and we can already kick because we already had the prince power up we can already fire stars but if we couldn't fire stars before we now can as default as the king and the king has one final feature that means we can also go through the king door and you can see all the purple health on the bottom it's given us full health as well for doing that and the switch on the wall means we can now activate this area which is pretty difficult we've collected all of the chests it's now in orange and all of the coins are in orange as well that means we get double perfect bonus all of the chests and all of the coins and you can see all of that health on the bottom of that screen that continues onto the third section of this very first castle of which there are maybe five or six major castles in this game. Some of the levels are tricky to master and some of these coins are very difficult to get and I only figured out how to get those coins towards the end of the Lamnamiga Games competition, the Super League, which this was recorded from. We played this game in April 2022 and this footage was recorded on the 10th of April 
So we did play this for three weeks and this was my best ever run at the game after practicing on it a few times so I recorded my best ever run so this is what you're about to see. We didn't complete the game, or at least I didn't and I didn't unlock the bonus on the top of this bit either on this particular run I don't think and I figured out how to do that a bit later on but it is possible to jump up here as long as we are the king and to cut across the top section of this bit and to get some more bonuses but we didn't do that on this particular run and so the bonus hidden sections I continue playing the game to find those even after this play run just thought I could find those and it's a bit like a Mario game there are tons of hidden sections that you'll find in this game and it's not a linear path you'll have to find the path where to go on this particular section I think we have to go left here and that's the way to go so when we go left we'll find some spikes and spikes will kill us unless we have tons of extra energy and this section here you will think that you can't fall down you're not supposed to fall down but that is actually the one and the only way to go through this level so if you remember that if you get stuck and find yourself dropping all the way down in the level which is easy to do because there are no help arrows around if you get lost and you get stuck you might find yourself backtracking all the way to the start of the level and I certainly did that on my travels so the king we can't collect that because we're already the king and the star I don't think that gives us extra score I'm not quite sure starting castle we'll find some hammers that hammer down on our heads and they're like pistons you have to avoid them which isn't hard and now that we're the king we can enter the throne room and the throne room is simply a bonus area you can see some nice water effects below us and they won't mirror our actions but it gives us a nice wibbly wobbly effect and from here we can collect a few more coins if you want the massive coin bonus you'll have to find that and I think that gives us an extra continue I'm not quite sure but you can see we're up to six lives now and you can see a heart has appeared in the bottom bottom center that's from that big heart that we collected which I think is a continue and these hidden blocks again like a Mario game sometimes you can fall over them if you know where they are and that takes us on to some more bonuses and so let's see well that gives us the prince and that gives us another life so that puts us up to seven lives at this stage and i definitely recommend getting the most lives that you can on this very first starting castle we've missed one life already but most of them we've picked up and if you collect a hundred coins that also gives us the star power and i'm not sure whether it gives us an extra life or not if you manage to collect tons and tons of them but if you collect 100 coins if you've run out of star power by colliding with the enemies or colliding with the spikes and getting killed then you'll get that if you collect 100 coins so the level is fair and it is fairly linear as long as you fall down through those gaps and that isn't entirely obvious that you meant to do that but definitely this is the way to go so let's collect another chest that unlocks the exit door and just like Batman the movie we'll have to watch out for that steam as well and just in case you couldn't get through the king door it actually gives us a crown just as we're about to enter that and that gives us the tip that we can collect that and enter the king door and get all these bonuses and we can collect another continue in there as well that's the third and the final stage of steam castle completed and that means we've now completed that we'll get a chance to move on to the bonus level which appears in between every major castle that you've completed that means we get to ride on the train that you saw in the introduction sequence and we can't fall off this train and we can't walk off it or jump off of it we're stuck like glue but what we can do is jump off that train and head towards some bonuses and we'll find some coins on this level which gives us some coins we can find some 100 point bonuses as well might buy the ones with the double zeros and also some 500 point bonuses as well and so the coins don't really give us much but they will give us a bonus at the end of this section 
and the 100s don't give as much either. So what I'm actually trying to go for is the 500s on this particular bonus level as much as possible. then give us 100 points for every coin that we've collected so they act as hundreds and then that will take us back onto the map screen. From here we can select four different directions once we've completed that first castle. Two of them are labelled outside. So let's go outside now, let's go out and let's explore a Mario section which really does remind me of Super Mario World and this is called Woody's World so maybe they changed the name of the main character so you'll find some elements in this game which are pretty familiar and some elements which aren't. You can see the spikes have to be timed on this particular level and look at that. If we aren't careful we can fall down gaps. We can collect lives but I completely missed that one and you can see the mushrooms there, they won't make us extra large and give us extra power ups but what they will do is wipe our energy out if we collide with them so we'll have to remember either to jump on their heads or if we have the star power which we don't at the moment because we've returned back to the elf and we do return back to the elf after completing every level so if we don't have the star then you'll find these levels are pretty difficult and just like Yogi's Great Escape on the Amiga, you'll find collapsible platforms and I hate collapsible platforms and spikes which appear and that begins to rub away all those precious lives that we managed to accumulate in the first castle. Our extra bonus is to find even on these levels and this isn't a major level this is simply a connecting level between the castles so you'll only find a few levels here and then once we get through maybe the second one then we get to move on back to that map screen again so that's the second one completed we now get orange chests so we've collected them all and we've found all 52 coins which means we get the perfect bonus again and so this is outside area two. In area two, we get another item, which is a switch. And using switches, it means we can activate things on the level, but you might notice that platform in front of us disappears off the edge of that screen. And that means unfortunately we're going to have to time that, otherwise we'll die again. And it's worth collecting this extra life here and even sacrificing a bit of energy because we're running down our lives. We really need to make sure at this point that we collect them. So you can see this isn't an AGA game, but we have some nice funky LCS graphics that we can see in the background and some stars and some trees. And this game is a step up from the likes of Robocod which had this considerable platform in action and some massive playability as well. So it's got the playability of Robocod, but the level design is much more linear. So in here, it doesn't take a genius to work out that if you hit one of these, you'll probably find a bonus. And that might have been behind the one that we've got rid of. Let's see, or oh, no, it isn't. Look at that, two extra lives now. Two extra lives and there's probably a bonus if we jump off there and risk life and limb and there is no chest to collect on that particular level which means it's green before we start and so that's the second one completed so we get to move on to the second major castle which in this case i'm going for a checker castle Levels in Woody's World can be completed virtually in any order apart from the first one and we don't have to go around this route on the map. But I like to go to Checker Castle second and visit that pretty early on for one very good reason. 
It's littered with lives, and the second amazing terrific reason is this castle is the most fun level in the entire game. It's my favourite level, and yet again like Robocod we find some checkers in the background, and let's just pick up that king power as well by cutting through the scenery, it definitely helps to memorise roll those are. And sometimes you can jump on top of things as well to get to other things using those platforms and some of them you just fall straight through them. So what do these stars do? Well they drop a platform on the floor, they're absolutely harmless, but if we collect them they'll drop a platform down which we can jump on, which is pretty useless on this section but that just gives us a harmless introduction to those. And the prince, well we've already got kings so we can't collect the prince staff at this moment so can be left where it is in that section. Not that we'll be coming back to this section ever again, as soon as you've gone through those doors that's it. And this reminds me of the chess section in Robocard where we have knights on the chess board, in this case they're firing down some projectiles towards us. And these ball bearings, the first few times I played this game I avoided the ball bearings thinking that they'd kill me, which is pretty understandable considering that that's what they do in 99% of other games. But as it turns out in this one, and it doesn't give you any clues, but apparently if you collide with them, you can use those ball bearings to project us onto higher levels. Find the path near the exit, it says, to reveal an extra bonus, and so we'll have to investigate the exit for that. And look at that, we're now on 12 lives, so these levels really showering us with lives now, and that's why I love Chacker Castle. Finding ourselves back at the start, sometimes these areas will take us out from where the chests are and give us a diversion and look at that, we've missed the coin again. So sometimes it's worth doing that because the time limits on 95% of these levels are a joke. It gives us 7 minutes on this one or 8 minutes to complete the level and if you were romping straight towards the exit you could probably do it in about half of that time. So apart from one level and the entire game, it always gives us tons and tons of time to get through and that means that we can backtrack, which is what we will be doing on a lot of these levels in order to investigate them. And the Checker Castle is one of the biggest castles in the game, which means it's going to take some memorising and some exploration as well. So that's the star power, we've already got that and this is going towards the exit so we don't need that. So let's take another ride and let's whisk our way through to the top section and hopefully we'll find another king door. Now the thing about king doors is if you get killed in the throne room either by touching one of these major spikes and that is a major spike that will kill us then we'll return back to the elf and we can no longer get through the king door. So that's something to be aware of, that's a bonus door where we can find extra chests. We've now returned to the elf, we've now lost our kick power, we've lost our big jump, we've lost our star power and it means our health takes a dive as well. So we'll have to remember that and we'll have to jump on enemies heads and look at that we've missed the prince. So some of those bonuses leaping out from under us, that's one of the novel aspects of this game and it's something that I upload and it means that we have to stay on our toes if we want to collect everything that we need to. So we've now round robin the level, we've now got four chests which means the exit door is open. If we want to get back through the king door then we'll have to find another crown somewhere and that will be somewhere perhaps nearby on the level. Sometimes you have to search very far to find the crown and if you know where it is you can simply walk straight to it. So let's check it out, maybe it's in one of these hidden bonus sections and once they're clear that's it. The enemies respawn but the bonus sections don't and so I think you can milk the enemies, I'm not quite sure but we won't be milking any of the enemies on this particular playthrough.
each major castle has three different sections. This is the second section of Checker Castle. And this is the one exception to the rule. This is the one level that doesn't give us a lot of time. And if we spend a lot of it backtracking around the level, we're not going to have enough time to finish it. So it gives us about nine and a half minutes that you can see on that corner. And some of these fall down areas will lead to instant death. And some of those will lead to bonuses. And you only discover those either by looking at the maps on the Hall of Light website or you fall down those and survive and simply remember that there's a bonus down there next time. And so there is a cut through section here that we can find. So it's worth looking at the alternative tiles on the level and hopefully it will either give us a bonus life or it will give us a power up. can block off some of the spikes using those collapsible platforms and that might come in handy a bit later on and ah, that gives us well we've already got firepower but just in case we didn't we now have it so checking out these areas I think it's possible to fall down that gap to pick up some more goodies I'm not quite sure and I'm not sure whether I'm gonna risk that on this particular level so you can see some of the enemies roll around at high speed so you have to be on your toes to fire towards them and if you have the firepower that's all great and if you don't well you're gonna have to rely on the jumps and the arc of firepower definitely takes some time to get used to that will fire directly across the screen if we have full energy otherwise that will arc across the screen and that usually means we'll have to jump in order to fire that towards the enemies unless the enemies are directly in front of us or on our same level so you can see respawning enemies and you can see I've already destroyed those blocks but luckily we can go around and collect those coins and those coins actually have a lighting effect on them that will actually sparkle and glow before you pick those up which is a neat effect so this is the first of the side areas that we'll need to visit I think and in here you would think that it gives us a cut through section but it doesn't this is simply a bonus area that we can get into and it's the first one it's pretty redundant but if you're going for all the coins at this point we can use the jumping through the platform trick and we can do that and sometimes there are cut through sections on all these different kind of areas but unfortunately there isn't one in this corner and if it was possible to duck down well we can't duck down and slide through it because we weren't the prince but we are now so the prince power means we can run a bit quicker and that's essential on this particular level with this tight time limit The second bonus area we will find a cut through and this cut through is as far as I know essential and so let's check out those bonuses and uh, not quite sure if there's anything there it's worth checking all of them just to find out and another chest means it was critical to come down here and you can see another king door so keep an eye out for a crown there's usually one hanging around and that's another staff and that's nothing so unfortunately we can't go through that king door until we've got the crown so am i gonna risk falling off someplace well let's risk going this way and surely here it is that's the upgrade that we're looking for so usually on these levels it's not afraid to virtually hold the player's hand but sometimes the player can get lost easily and some of these levels are sprawling so they'll have to get used to these levels and memorize them if they want to get through them pretty easily and you can see some of the hearts aren't even possible to get because if you try to collect these it's going to kill us and trying to collect these it's already wiped off most of our energy already 
so it does require some good jumping skills and luckily there aren't that many pixel perfect jumps in the game we have to get all the way over to the edge of platforms to make those which I hate so that's very good that it isn't in the game and there aren't too many leaps of faith either but there are plenty of them luckily they will either go to a bonus area or instant death so if you follow leaps of faith round it usually gives us some indication of what is down there pretty quickly so we don't have to do that again so that's another bonus area found the exit door is still locked we found three chests so far and I'm still trying to investigate these areas for bonuses of which there may be some that I don't have a clue how to access even after playing this game several times but you can see I'm not bothering to collect that coin because we're running out of time on this level which is something that we're definitely going to have to be aware of found another bonus section which really helps us with the coins and secret doors as well you never know what's going to be in there some of those are hidden and some of those aren't but the secret door actually takes us out to the top of the level again and so from here we're still looking for those chests so we're gonna have to track those down all over the map and we're gonna have to find out where to go I'm not sure if this is the area and I don't think so so we're running out of time now with three minutes to go we need to track down those chests and we'll need to run around this level pretty quickly in order to find them That's great news, that's the fifth chest and that's the one that's opened up the exit door. So hopefully now we can start to make our way through to the exit with only two and a half minutes left. That would be a sensible idea as long as you know where it is and yet again it doesn't give us any arrows to help us with that. And this particular corner we can cut through just like that and there is a platform over to the left and that platform enables us to get here without going through that cut through and if you activate all of these platforms that gives us an extra platform so if we activate all those green tiles that means that another platform will appear but we're already in king mode which means we've got a nice long jump and that means we don't have to activate that platform the extra one if we don't want to we can simply jump on top of these and we'll make it but the most important section of this area, and yes it does give us tons more hearts and tons more bonuses, some of those we really don't need to go for with a minute and a half left on the clock. And so some of these are diversions, I'm not sure whether it's possible to get every single bonus on every single level, but this level makes sure that we virtually can't. So this is definitely an important area, this gives us another heart and that heart what does that do well hopefully it gives us something extra and look at that we're trying to go diagonal bottom right but we can only kick if we are the prince and we're the king at the moment and so let's just collect these two extra lives so what am i actually going to do with 50 seconds left on the clock we'll need to be the prince if we want to slide through that gap so what i'm actually doing is making a run for an enemy and hoping to get myself killed Having done that we'll then go down a grade and that means we can now leap up back into the spot and we can pull down diagonal right just like Zool we can slide through that gap that means we can collect this heart that gives us another 5 lives which puts us up to 20 lives and there are some more bonuses up here and all kinds of coins and things to collect but we've now only got a few seconds remaining so 
At this point, what I'm actually going to do is drop down, and if we miss the exit door on this particular level, we'll fall down through a gap and we'll end up back at the start of the level. So don't miss the exit door, we managed to make it with five seconds remaining, and we didn't fall down to the start of the level, which makes this incompletable if you're rushing for time. So we collected eight chests and that wasn't orange, so that means there were still more chests to find on that particular level. Now we've done Checker Castle, it's time to move outside again, onto the second outside area. And let's see, it should introduce us to another kind of a trap. And avoiding these things which fall down onto our heads is difficult, but it's essential to get the store power early. And then hopefully we can lob those towards the enemies, and that saves us getting killed. And getting killed on these cutthroughs, these mini sections in between everything is very easy to do and that's why it's critical to have maybe 20 lives at this point now let's see if we can find any more lives yes that's another one 21 lives at this point so lives really come thick and fast and 22 lives at this point it's definitely worth clearing out these levels but it's just a shame that the enemies respawn and then you can't time those and get rid of them completely because if we fall down the level again, it means we'll have to clear out everything again. And if we've lost our star power, that just makes the job much harder. So there are two levels on every one of the interconnection levels, the outside levels. So once we get through the second one, it should mean that we can make our way through onto maybe another one or even another castle. Speeding up through this footage, just like Lionheart, we'll have to time platforms that we can jump onto, and time spikes, and also we'll have to memorise puzzles. You can see in this puzzle it's a filled in circle, a filled in square, an open circle and an open square. So we'll have to memorise that for a bit later on. Luckily these levels don't give us that many problems to memorise, in fact that's I think the only one that we'll have to memorise in this entire game. So this is the height of the ideas that this game throws towards as a puzzle that we'll have to memorise. So maybe in another section of the game we'll have to memorise another one. And so that's a bit cheap. But luckily it means the exit door will appear as soon as you've got that right and it gives us the answer earlier on so hopefully we can simply get that right. And there is another life up there but I'm not going to waste any more lives trying to do that. Let's just move on back again to the map screen and we've done outside so the next one now is the cave or the boats. And the boats enable us to get across to the other side of the map so let's do that first of all and then we get through to something like an Aladdin level where we get to jump on some boats, collect some coins and we get to jump on things and perform extra high jumps and avoid cannons firing cannonballs towards us and these are the second favourite levels of mine on the entire game because they're very easy and you can simply romp as fast as possible through them at high speed which is what I like to see and then once we get through the castle that brings us on to a maybe a robocod kind of a level where we get an underwater section and in the underwater sections we can't swim unfortunately but what we can do is avoid these ghosts the ghosts can't be killed because they're already dead but what they will do is wipe off our energy so you'll have to time the jumps over the ghosts I guess at this stage this game reminds me very much of Arabian Nights although we don't have very many collectibles to pick up but we don't have to collect things that will affect us later on like magic carpets and things like that so all of the coins collected 66 all of the chests collected 
and if you don't collect all of the chests on the level you have to go back to find them so as soon as you find the chest it's good to run into that and open it up straight away and this section reminds me of aquatic games where we get to jump on cutesy creatures heads across water and things like that so again reminding us of the James Pond series I really do like the music in these sections and it's not obvious that we have to go certain ways unless you've explored the map and played this game a few times and that means sometimes we'll have to be walking into sudden death and luckily we can leave these enemies behind us if we manage to get them into a corner we can jump over their heads and can leave those behind but it's a pretty dangerous area in the boats and there are two boat sections in this game and so there are four boat levels out of the 60 that we'll get through so let's move on to another castle this is cog castle and here we will find cogs which are not lethal at all and it means we can ride on those cogs and take ourselves around the level and this is where the weaknesses of the game begins to come through because this level is very much like the first one only there is less to kill us and instead of spikes there is mud pits that we can fall into and you can see it's the same formula of riding on platforms avoiding things shooting things and collecting chests and most of the magazine reviewers which gave this bad score mentioned that the level design gets pretty unimaginative once you get through the game and definitely the level design of the earlier levels is fantastic but once you get to this stage the levels look pretty much identical which means it's very difficult to memorize your way around these and also very difficult to navigate because sometimes you have to cut back on yourself and some of these levels unfortunately once you've cut back on yourself you can't return back to the start that means if you've missed a chest some levels i think maybe even particularly the next one if you haven't collected all of the chests before you get to the exit sometimes there is no way back and i hate that in the game there's nothing worse than getting all the way to the end of the level and finding that there's absolutely no way back and so you'll have to watch out for that particular aspect and that's definitely one thing that lets this game down the graphics are amazing, the colours are great, the music is great and the playability is spot on, the controls are great, the jumping is fantastic and the jump reminds me kind of like a super frog game we have a nice big jump and we don't have to worry about pixel perfect jumps or leaps of faith but in this game it does have a few drawbacks and getting stuck, losing your way around or finding that you can no longer reach the exit or getting stuck in pits like this is definitely a drawback because now it means unless we find the crown we can no longer enter the king door so on some of these levels it's worth bearing in mind to go to the left first of all which is what I'm doing at the moment going all the way left and finding out what there is in order to find the chests and then head back to the right only if you can't find the exit door after that so the exit door is usually in the bottom right corner of every level but if it isn't it could be in the top left corner or it could be in the left so sometimes you'll have to do some exploring in order to find the exit door and plot your way around from there And this part is very difficult because it's easy to bang our heads on these steps that means we can no longer get to a bonus area which I think was supposed to give us the crown but we're not really too bothered about that at the moment as long as we have those chests and those lives that means that we can almost write our ticket now to the end of the game
Woody's World was developed by Vision Software, which was based out there in New Zealand. Vision Software was originally called Arch Computer Soft, and that was founded in 1989 by Paul Andrews, Rodney Smith, and Mark Sibley. The code of this game was coded by Paul Andrews, and the graphics were created by Rodney Smith. And I'm not sure if Mark Sibley had any help with this game at all, gave any help to this whatsoever. But Paul Andrews, he created a game called Gnome, which was published for in Linnell Software in 1991. He also coded Cybernetics, which is a fantastic Defender game, which appeared on the Amiga format Coverdisc in 1992. He also coded both of the Zombie Apocalypse games. And from here, he moved from Vision onto Mark Sibley's other label, which was called Acid Software, and Acid Software published Woody's World. So while at Acid, he managed to code Seek and Destroy in 1993, which we've reviewed already, and also Roadkill in 1994, which we've reviewed already. And Rodney Smith also created most of the graphics for the games that we've mentioned, as well as other Acid software hits such as Skid Marks and Overkill. The music was created by Blair Zupikic, and he also created the music for many of the games that we've mentioned as well by Acid Software, based out there in New Zealand. And I think all of these guys were New Zealand based and so they had great success over on the Amiga. Definitely I remember Acid Software and I remember Vision Software from, well, the Seek and Destroy that we've seen already in other games, so definitely they have heritage and it's pretty unusual to see New Zealand game developers appearing and there aren't too many of them on the PC. As we move through the levels on the speeded up footage, I'll just say that according to the magazines, some of them said that the game was unoriginal and uninspiring, it had limited playability, it was not as fast as Zool or not as addictive as Trolls. Well, you can't really compare this to Zool even though you can run and gun like Zool. It's kind of a Zool game where you have to collect things up in order to unlock the exit door and you have to run and kick and things like that as well and there are bonus areas but well it also had a time limit as well. But for me, it doesn't really feel like Zool. It feels more like an Arabian Nights game or something like that. And it's not as addictive as Trolls. Well, I never actually got into Trolls at all. So I never found that game particularly addictive. And so those are the comments by the magazine scorers who scored this the lowest score. And you can see the level design on some of these castles is pretty samey and a bit bland and it's based on a simple block tile pattern and today maybe you could create this using red pill or backbone or something like that and the games create a construction kit so move on now this reminds me of toki the level in toki where we get to jump over water and it's one of the mid levels we'll get that you can also see that just like fire and ice, we also get a nice water effect and fire and ice also had one of these outdoor jungly type levels and I'm not sure whether you had to defeat piranha fish on that game, it's always fun to see the piranhas and look at that, and a pixel perfect jump that we need to make so there are some pixel perfect jumps but luckily not too many in the game and one of the better sides of this game is it does contain different areas and different themes. You can see the bubbles rising in this particular level it reminds me of Bubble Dizzy. Bubble Dizzy which appeared on the Amiga 
and on the Commodore 64 and I think that appeared in Fantastic Dizzy as well and just like Bubble Dizzy was supposed to ride on those bubbles unfortunately another problem with this game rears its ugly head at this point and that is if you don't jump right on the edge of platforms you have inertia so sometimes you can die and sometimes there are hidden blocks that you're banging your head on and I banged my head on a hidden block there and that means we died so that's one of the bugs in the game sometimes there are those hidden blocks and look at that fish trying to kill us as soon as we start the level so this reminds me a bit of James Pond so this does borrow from other genres and we've seen these underwater levels before but the best way I've found to tackle these particular levels is number one avoid the fish as much as possible but number two jump over the bubbles as much as possible do not try to ride them because they disappear off the level very quickly and sometimes as soon as you've got on top of bubbles they will disappear and you'll simply die so sometimes this game is very tricky and if you try to go to the northwest of the starting castle there is an outdoor section and an underwater section which is very tricky it gives us two bubbles to jump over and I've never actually managed to complete that section that's why I'm avoiding it on this particular playthrough luckily if we take the boats which we did do we can get over to the second island and complete the castle over there without going through onto northwest of the starting castle so I'm going to avoid that so lava castle you can see in the top corner we can get to lava castle without using the cut through so it means that we can complete these levels without actually having to complete all of them we can take a shortcut around some levels and as long as we completed the main castles in this game that means the final castle will appear and then that means once we've completed that that's game over so you don't have to complete all of the castles in fact there are some special levels which are the cloud levels and things like that only appear if you haven't completed the castle levels in the game and once you've completed all the castles sometimes some of the bonus levels disappear and you can no longer go through those but believe you me the cloud level is horrible because it gives you a wind to blow against you forward and backwards so when you're going on tiny clouds like a dizzy game you don't want a wind blowing you around the level so i avoid that like the plague and you don't have to go through that level in order to complete the game and that cloud mission definitely has been the death of me before and out when i've been trying to play this game and warm up so you won't be getting to see that cloud level and if you want to experience that it is possible if you put in the password and those passwords are all available on that lemon amiga website moving on to another castle this is to the south of the island this is the conveyor belt area the conveyor belt castle and this plays pretty much like cog castle only this time you've got conveyors instead of cogs and you've got electricity firing down and that's instead of steam from the steam castle so this again the backgrounds remind me of robocod and there are probably some extra cut throughs but by this stage the game does start to feel a bit boring great that it introduces some new enemies and some new enemies actually start to fire towards it as well and start to leap around the screen which makes things slightly more difficult but I'm skipping through this footage because all of these levels appear pretty samey and that means navigating around them can be very difficult indeed and look at that we've found another cut through section and I think we can get to that area in two ways let's slide our way through those and explore these areas because some of them you can only get to once once you've cleared them out and that's it so that's that area cleared out and now that we are the prince we can slide on through and i can't remember what game that reminds me of 
but definitely reminds me of plenty of games on the Amiga where we have to slide through places. Moving through the conveyor area, it's not really giving us too much to worry about. It's not giving us any more traps. And these enemies are pretty samey from level to level. In fact, one of them got stuck in the scenery that you saw as well. So it's not essential to kill any of the enemies on any of the levels. Sometimes you can avoid them and simply loop the loop and go around in a big circle. But you can see I'm completely lost at the moment. So I'm running around trying to find a single chest hoping that I haven't left one behind. And again, what I'm doing is going to the left first of all. Clearing that out, we found the exit door, so that's a small mercy. It just means that we have to blindly rush around and find some more chests. And that's the king door. So by the time the player has been playing this for over an hour, and it would be great to get some amazing backgrounds at this point. The music is terrific throughout. Unfortunately, the level design isn't, so it feels like the programmer or maybe the graphics guy gave up or got bored halfway through and created all the extra levels simply to get the game finished. Moving on to the scores, Amiga Force gave Woody's World the lowest score at 58%, Dato Magazine awarded it 60%, Amiga Joker gave this 70%, the current Lemon Amiga score is 71, Amiga Action gave it 75, The One gave it 79, Amiga Format gave this 84%, saying that the great graphics were fantastic, the music's fantastic, silky smooth scrolling, silky smooth controls. And CU Amiga awarded it 86%, Amiga Down Under awarded Woody's World 90%, and Amiga Computing gave this the highest score at 92%, and it said for an OCS game, and I think this required maybe an extra half meg of memory to actually play it, so that your Amiga needed one meg in total, but for an OCS game they said this was incredible, they said it was huge, they said it was fun and playable, and there wasn't too many annoying aspects in the game, and it will keep players busy for several weeks trying to master it. Once we were playing this in the games competition it took me roughly two weeks to master it, and then after that I didn't touch it again. So all of that gives this game the average score of 7.5 out of 10. Definitely James Pond was the inspiration for the game Robocod, and on this fishy castle you can even see fish in the background. And again that's a simple tile set, so that's very easy to pull off and very easy to do and it's good that it's giving us some extra lives at this point. And the fish can fire on target as well, which is another upgrade, but at this point the player is simply waiting around as best they can to complete the level. So let's check out the mines, and if you get through the mines then that opens up the cloud section that I mentioned earlier on. And here we find some boulders that drops on our heads, and maybe again like Arabian Nights we'll have to avoid those boulders dropping down. And like Lionheart we'll find spinning tiles which will spin around twice and then we'll have to jump on them. We don't have to use our sword to stop them in midair, we would simply have to jump on top of them. So you can see this is a basic level, the colour scheme again reminds me of Robocod and the basic tile background. So you won't find any layers of parallax anywhere or foreground or background graphics or things like that, which they could have done to spice this game up, 
but really it's the level design which lets this game down. If all of the castles were as good as the best castles earlier in the game, then that would be fantastic. But unfortunately they aren't, and Checker Castle remains the best and the only decent castle with the best level design, the best enemies, and everything else. So at this point let's just rush on through. And I think this is Lava Castle, which means simply we get lava to avoid. And apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. You can see the levels are still pretty vacant at this stage. Towards the end of the game, you can see sometimes we can respawn directly over enemies, so there are disappointing aspects that really rack up. And another disappointing aspect is there is no high score table with the game at all. So if you complete the game, as soon as you've completed it, your high score will disappear. And that means if you want to record your high scores, you'll have to write those down before you complete the game. Let's explore all of these sections and that simply gives us a bit more score. So let's move on now to the lava castle. We've completed the cave section and like as I mentioned, the lava castle has a bit of lava in there, which is quite a disappointing effect and reminds me of most of the other platformers. And this colour scheme actually reminds me of an Atari ST game, but it might surprise you to learn that Woody's World is an Amiga exclusive title. It was only ever released or produced on the Amiga, it doesn't have any other conversions whatsoever. in Lava Castle it gets pretty difficult because the main aspects of Lava Castle is all the hidden blocks that you find around the level and it's surprising that there are tons of hidden blocks around the level and sometimes you'll need to find them in order to find all of the chests and that isn't obvious that they are there and if you find some coins which are out of reach the only thing you can do is jump around wildly until you either find the hidden blocks or you find some other way to collect those coins. So you can see sometimes it gets boring to time things at this stage, but you have to keep remembering to time things. And look at that dragon. Very fun dragon firing a single fireball towards us. And if there were more enemies on these stages, then it would be more fun, but definitely this isn't as fun as a Turrican game where there are tons and tons of enemies and you need to shoot them down. No, this game doesn't rely on the firepower at all. So if you don't have the firepower, then you've not really got much to worry about. You simply have to avoid everything as best as possible. level is also difficult to memorise and I walked around in complete circles on some of these levels for hours trying to find my way out and again on some of these levels the only saviour was the whole map which revealed how I was supposed to do it. I can't find the exit and I'm jumping everywhere trying to find the exit and I can't manage it. The only way I am going to manage it is if I find that hidden block on the floor and that means again romping around the levels forever getting stuck going all the way back to the start of it again trying to find where I'm supposed to be going because there is only one way through it and once you know that way it's great and if you don't know that way well you're gonna have to hunt around until you discover it and that can take some time. So I 
definitely had some fun with Woody's World. It was a game that I'd never really got far in before. I'd played it maybe once and thought, well, it's a standard platformer and never played it again. But coming back to this in the games competition, where the players all played this on the English Amiga board and on Lemon Amiga for three weeks solid, it means that we could explore this and it was actually fun seeing the players' videos where all the hidden sections and extra bonuses had been recorded and to actually see how players had discovered those hidden sections. So it was fun to play it in the competition and definitely playing a game in a competition against other players means that there is an incentive to get far and try again with every turn. And so this is as far as I got with the game, I got to the end of it and I'm not going to get much further than this given the fact that we're down to six lives now and we're reaching, well we're still halfway through, Lava Castle. So it was fun and I definitely had fun exploring Checker Castle and Checker Castle exploring all these areas and finding tons and tons of lives just like again the Turrican game having tons and tons of lives going through these is fantastic but on levels like this it boils down to a very simple platformer and very simple platformers on the Commodore 64 could have been done definitely this could have been a conversion of an 8-bit game given the lack of complexity of these levels and there are definitely games out there which definitely had better graphics and a better package as far as level progression and even the difficulty curve seems almost non-existent at this point. find another memorization puzzle you can see one two three four five six seven and then you can see lots of dice so what do we need to do well the solution is rather obvious we're supposed to put these dice into order and as long as we remember to do that then it should be possible to unlock the bonus area so let's attempt to do that and so the puzzles involved in this game aren't really difficult given the fact that the solution to some of these is right in front of our faces so unlike Batman the movie we'd have to go through a long convoluted puzzle to get through them and it's pretty obvious what we need to do that's the second and only other puzzle that we need to memorize on the entire game everything else is platform in action so I'm very grateful for that aspect the fact that there isn't too much stupid puzzle solving going on and we can simply run and jump our way around these levels at high speed And that's Lava Castle completed, so that just means that there is one more bonus area to get through and I think these bonus areas are identical every single time so going through these three bonus sections every single time can feel very repetitive and so we've completed virtually all of them apart from to the northwest which is not where I'm going to go and it means the final volcano level turns into the secret castle instead of the clouds we now get the lost castle and that's the final level of the game and 
That's the final level. I'm going to show you that only unlocks once you've completed all of the other castles in the game. So, the Lost Castle. And it's great to see whales and things on the map. I'm creating some animations. And it's always great to see a map in these types of games. So, let's venture on to the Lost Castle. And unlike most of the other levels, this level is slightly different in the fact that it auto scrolls. Which means if you run off the screen, you'll lose a life. And if you fall down in the gaps, that means you'll lose a life. And if you lose any energy from this debris falling on our heads, the chances are we're going to lose a life. So on this very end level, all you need to do is to have plenty of lives on offer. And I'd say at least seven lives by this point should mean that we have enough to complete it as long as we don't make some terrible mistakes and it's very easy to make some silly mistakes on these levels because we don't actually know the correct way to go and it also scrolls but sometimes that is a hindrance and sometimes you can fall down gaps as well so definitely there is no way back on these particular levels so if you know them that's fantastic and if you don't you'll have to struggle your way through them as soon as you've completed this, then that's game over and it takes you back onto the title screen again and that means that it's a job well done. And again, I've no idea where I'm supposed to be going, so let's try to follow that route. Down here, I wonder which way it is to go. If I walk off that screen, I might get killed. Maybe if I fall down here, maybe that's the way to go. I don't really want to risk walking off the screen, but then again, going off this direction has killed me anyway. So sometimes it doesn't start scrolling quickly enough to tell you the way to go. And yet again, right on the edge of platforms, sometimes it refuses to jump. And that's wiped off at least two or three lives, now four lives at this particular game. So thank you very much for watching my play guide review of Woody's World. And I hope to see you again on another Lemon Amiga play guide and review at some point sometime soon.